you, Doctor! Don't forget to subscribe! Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Princess Life Light, and this is my partner Pikachu. Pikachu! Call me Coco. I am the Mermaid Princess of the South Pacific Ocean. My name is Karen. I am the Mermaid Princess of the Antarctic Ocean. My name is Noelle, and I am the Mermaid Princess of the Arctic Ocean. I am the pretty Agarian who fights for love and for courage. I am Sailor Jupiter. I'll feel you regret. It'll leave you numb. My name is Sarasa. I am Ichi's sister. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm Roka. And I am Sarasa's sister-in-law. My name is Kizosoma. The animal in the zodiac that I symbolize is the tiger. Call me Hirosoma. The animal that symbolizes the zodiac is the sheep. And that is me. A fine pleasure to meet you. My name is Kotoko. My name is Amu Hinamori. I can transform into Amulet Heart, Amulet Spade, Amulet Clover, Amulet Diamond, Amulet Angel, Amulet Devil, and Amulet Fortune. Hello, my name is Plutia. I can transform into Iris Heart. My name is Vert. I can transform into Green Heart. I am Nico Robin, a treasure hunter. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Kami. I am Ochako Uraka. Let's go! Hey, hey! Nice to meet you! Call me Nejere Hato! I am Itsuka Kendo. Pleasure to meet you. What's up? I'm Black Star! Hi there, it's Kimi! I'm Nozomi. It's a pleasure to meet you. Call me Mavis. I'm pleased to meet you. I am the head of the Furude family, Rika Furude. I am Kanami Chidori. It's a pleasure. My name is Hestia. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi there, I'm Machi. Nice to meet you. I am called Rola. Be grateful, I'm not giving you any punishment. I am La Pucelle. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Sister Nana. Nice to meet you. I'm Rico. Great to meet you. My name is Snow White. Pleasure to meet you. About us, I'm Nagisa One. And I'm Nagisa Two. What's up? I'm Boruto. It's a pleasure. My name is Hikaru Shido. I represent the element of fire. My name is Fu Hoji. And I represent the element of wind. I'm Umi Ryuzaki. And I represent the element of water. Hi, I'm Happy. I'm an Exceed from Extalia. And a member of the Fairy Tale Guild. Good day, I'm Carla. I am an Exceed as well. And... We are also in the Fairy Tale Guild. Hey there, I'm Wendy Marble. I'm a Sky Dragon Slayer. My name is Romeo Combolt. I'm the only son of Fairy Tale's mage, Macau Combolt. And I'm a mage of the Fairy Tale Guild. <laughs> I'm Hanon Hosho. I am the Mermaid Princess of the South Atlantic Ocean. Glad to meet you. I'm Rena Toyn, and I am the Princess of the North Atlantic Ocean. Hiya, I'm Manatsu. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm Aerie. Nice to meet you. Call me Pony Sumotori. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Denki, and I'm the handsome one. I am Jaume. It's a pleasure. Hello! I'm Jaume! Hey, I'm Julia. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Nayuki. Nice to meet you. I'm Hanyu for the day. And I'm Ayu Tsukimiya. Nice to meet you. My name is Lucas Klein, everyone. And this is my friend Haro. Adam, that's you too. I am glad to make your acquaintance. I am Sarada. My name is Kotome Ichinose. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'll promise to do my best on my violin. I am Yukine. It's nice to meet you. I am Pikachu Popstar. My songs will reach out to all of you. Pikachu PhD is in the house. My prescription? Knockout. Hi, I'm Rena Ryukyu. You look so cute. I want to take you home with me. I am called Alpha Five. It is a great pleasure to make your acquaintance. They often call me Sayuri. Nice to meet you. I am Kaori. Please don't upset me. Futaba Sakura here. Nice to meet you. I'm Taleta. Nice to meet you. I am Melissa Shield. Please to make your acquaintance. And I am Jasmine, leader of the Olivine City Gym. Pleased to meet you. Hey there, I'm Taru Hagakure, the Invisible Girl. Let's get this thing started.
started. You know, I've been working on training Rena and Raven and more. So here's another review. Last time we covered Warrior Land 4, and now it's time for another review, but it's on Kim Possible 2019, and the movie premiered on Disney Channel the day after Valentine's Day, which was February 2019. And that's 17 years after the original wrapped up, and Phineas and Ferb took over on that year. And the fans were skeptical, but they tried to keep an open mind, and it kind of looked like the show, but then when it did premiere, the fans were less impressed, and they called it an un funny slower rendition of the rendition of the original that made it look iconic of the crime fighting team they grew up with. Now let's take a look on why this movie was a dumpster fire and why Kim Possible deserve better and what caused the staff to burn bridges. <laughs> Now let's go over why it should be impossible. One, bad grasp of the source material from the same creators, Bob Scully and Mark McCorkle, who are writers and executive producers for the movie and Disney Channel, where it airs. Most of the characters are badly butchered. Kim suffers the worst flanderization of all of the characters, as she has gone from a badass spy as well as a caring and loving friend into a spoiled, jealous, attention-seeking Mary Sue who is obsessed with being popular at school and a better spy, and cares more about validation rather than saving the world. In addition, she is often depicted as much weaker and more emotionally vulnerable in the original series just to make Athena seem stronger and most powerful in, in comparison which is evident of how she is doubting herself and crying many times in the film ever since Athena became more popular than her. Kim's sports profession was changed from cheerleading to soccer, as this was one of Kim's defining character traits in the original cartoon, and it explains why she's so athletic by getting the athletic trait solely from Nana Possible's dojo in the film, and Kim's jealousy towards Athena completely goes against her character in the show of how she doesn't hold grudges against those she's jealous of for very long and eventually moves on. While in the original cartoon, Kim does show jealousy toward her rivals at times, she quickly moves on from her jealousy and instead overcomes it in a mature way and quickly moves on to more important tasks like saving the world, unlike this live-action counterpart of hers. And for some reason, in the film, Kim is shown to be afraid actually deathly terrified in electric seals, while in the episode, Rufus and Show of the original cartoon, the electric eels barely even frighten her. Ron became a lot dumber and more of an incompetent sidekick than the original series. Wade, despite having good intentions, continuously alerts and updates Kim on what is going on in the world way too much on almost every aspect of Kim's life, even during the most inappropriate of times, hence making him unintentionally come off as a stalker. And Bonnie is still a one-dimensional popular girl, but she is far meaner and crueler to Kim than in the original series, for example. Despite being impressed with Kim's soccer skills, she still refuses to allow Kim on the Middleton High School soccer team and instead demotes her to being the team's equipment manager as freshmen can't be on the team. She even lets the new girl Athena be on the soccer team despite her being a freshman due to her skills which makes her come off as very hypocritical. And Kim and Ron's homeroom teacher, Steve Barkin, has been changed from a top of nails militant into a complete weakling and crazy cat person, which is not how he acted in the original cartoon. In the addition, he is not even funny at all, since the original voice actor, Patrick Warburton, is what made his original animated counterpart a funny and memorable character due to Warburton's humiliation humorous voice and an overdramatic voiceover performance, which is something his actor Michael P. Northey failed to recapture in the character. Draken and Shigo's dynamic aren't as well written here and they nearly aren't funny as they were in the original cartoon. And Kim's younger twin brothers Jim and Tim are pointless as they're barely in the film, not even for comic relief of harassing Kim or other characters for fun like in the original cartoon. Despite being based on the show due to the creators being involved in the movie's process, this resulted in the film's continuity being a mess. Sometimes it acts as a prequel, interquel, and the rest of the time not so all in one film. In the series, Kim would always use a variety of spy gadgets. But in the film, she's only obsessed with grappling guns. 
The pacing for the film is very slow and inferior compared to the cartoon, which was known for its fast pacing and action in order to fit the show's comedic timing. Not helping is the film's bad cinematography used in most of the action scenes, which slows down the film's pacing. And most of the film's focus is on Kim's high school popularity rather than doing any spy-related mission. The new designs for the characters did not fit very well, like Kim's new mission outfit and Dragon and Shigo's change of skin color. Kim said that the changes on her outfit were because she thought it was too cartoony. Ironically, though, the film was based on a cartoon. And on that topic, she also looks at the camera in a very meta way, which wasn't featured in the series. This remark also feels more like a jab to the series rather than a homage. Compared to the original source material, the jokes in this movie are very hit or miss. Bad acting from most of the main cast, including Sadie Stanley's performance as the titular character, and very cheap and poor special effects. Even for Disney Channel TV movie standards, Especially the laughably bad CGI used for Rufus, and there was also cringeworthy and laughable dialogue, such as the infamous and wannabe a dog line. And most of the characters are miscast or barely resemble on their animated counterparts. While the outfit for Sadie wore she, that looks good on her, she felt like a random choice to play Kim Possible, and she also looks way too young for the character. Erica. Tom is seriously miscast as Bonnie Rockwaller because Bonnie is a burnet Caucasian, not a black-haired Asian, which could already be considered to whitewashing, and Steve Barkin hardly resembles his animated counterpart in a way. In the cartoon, he is muscular built with brown hair, but here in the film he is bald and obese built. Although unintentional, he even looks uncannily similar to an appearance from Bertrand Winkle and the Disney Channel sitcom Jesse. Athena is a very pointless and unnecessary character because her assistance to Kim and Ron disrupted by dynamic teamwork they were always known for, and her role is kind of a rehash on Eric's role from Kim Possible to the drama. The plot twist that she was a robot was an obvious attempt to make her survive the explosion under G-rating rules. On that topic, the realization that Athena was evil feels very rushed and forced. Unlike Eric's evil revelation, which was much better written and executed. Speaking of which, the film's plot is basically a gender swap rehash of Kim's possible sort of drama, where this time it is Kim who is facing a jealousy over a far superior girl who turns out to be evil, Athena, instead of vice versa with Ron facing jealousy over a superior guy who turns out to be evil, Eric. It is later revealed revealed on in the film that Athena was created as all part of Draken's evil plan for demovating and humiliating him into a total weakling, which is just as stupid as it sounds, even for a supervillain like Draken. The scene involving removal of Rufus's childhood history with Ron and replacing it with Rufus being a stolen lab rat obviously makes no sense, and not to mention it consequently makes Kim and Ron's first encounter with Rufus seem rather unethical because they stole him rather than own him. Monique, Kim's friend from the cartoon, is nowhere to be found in the movie as if she was dead or erased from existence. And the film tries too hard to be hip and modernly, using outdated slang and bad marks, electronic gadgets, as well as over-reliance on selfies. And Kim does so many unnecessary flips and backflips, such as doing a backflip just to pick a paper off the ground. And there was a pointless scene of Athena and Kim bouncing around their room, dancing to Poppy Blues music, which goes on for way too long and serves no purpose in the film whatsoever other than just filler. And despite being a main character from the TV series, Rufus Fist doesn't have that much focus in the film. In the series, Rufus was revealed to be an intelligent mole rat that can do a lot and even provide comic relief like his owner Ron. But in the film, the only thing he's done was simply push a button. And on that topic, the CGI for Rufus is laughably wet and therefore creepy and hideous to look at. He's nowhere as cute in his cartoon version. And I can tell that if you have seen that CGI version of Rufus, I can tell that your minds were like King K. Wool's reaction. Change the screen under that nightmare! There's heaps of plot holes. 
Why does Kim still continue to be, to be friends with Athena despite the fact that she was revealed to be evil all along and tried to make Kim look bad so many times throughout the film? And how does Draken become more invincible with Athena's robot powers turned back his, to a child in the process? Wouldn't it make more sense if he turned him blue? And there's also an infamous scene where Shigo makes a feminist preach to Draken by the film's climax for no reason other than, well, pondering. Which is when Draken calls out his henchmen to attack Athena and Kim. Henchmen attack! Only for Shigo to correct it with henchwomen attack. Which mainly doesn't work because most of the film was spent with a title character associated with being heroic, moping, crying, sabotage missions for per yearly for attention and do almost little to no heroic, making the line feel a lot more out of place. It was most likely, it actually most likely killed the Kim Possible franchise as there are no further productions based on Kim Possible after this film, other than a five short miniseries titled Kim Hushable. And the market of the filming is a bit poor. While the teaser trailer received positive views, the trailer received a lot of dislikes from fans of the original. And despite the film's intro, which is a good recreation from the intro of the TV series, depicting Kim, a scene of Kim as a cheerleader, she is never shown to be a cheerleader in the actual film, which is false advertising. There is a few good qualities. Eight of them, actually. The plot of having to live someone else's shadow seems pretty realistic and reasonable. The attempt at making Kim less perfect and more flawed and a more emotional approach to the character in live action has potential in its decent protagonist and heroine in an attempt to make the character more reliable to the target audience of children and preteens, but it is sadly executed more poorly at the cost of severely dialing down most of her strengths and qualities in the process. And it has a pretty good recreation of the intro from the TV series along with Kim's famous, so what's the stitch? Mine. Patton Oswalt reprises his role as the Professor De Dementor from the cartoon. And while he looks different from the cartoon version, both costume and appearance, Oswalt still does a decent performance as Dementor. And there are a few nice references to the cartoon, like the sign near Middleton High changing every time it appears. Nancy Cartwright reprises a role as Rufus from the cartoon. Kim's original voice actress, Christine Carlson Romano, makes a cameo appearance in the movie as popular singer Poppy Blue. And Sean Giambron is a spot-on casting choice as Ron Stoppable, as he both looks and sounds perfectly just like the character. And Connie Ray's role for Nana Possible gives the performance, giving the character a more realistic approach. Overall, this wasn't a good movie. That was the best we could talk about it, but the movie is a Latin rehash of So the Drama. So this was not a fun movie to watch, and we know we all love Ang Lee's The Hulk, but transition cuts similar to an anime is not okay. Even the black barb feels like Adobe Spock, but worse. And using scroll transition instead of fade in, and fades out or gone, but plays the same sound over and over again. It's like Sonic changing into Bad Sonic from 2019. So, for this review, we give this movie a 1 out of 10, and Gabe gives it a 1.5 out of 5. Thank you so much, Secret Fan Girl. And, about the reception, it ex received extremely negative reviews from fans of the cartoons, and it currently holds a 3.6 out of 10 rating on IMDb. And despite this, it received high views from critics by being presumably the only film on this week on Mirahay's to hold a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it should be noted that it still remains today with only six reviews with no critical consensus. But the audience score is 29% and is widely regarded by many people as one of the worst films of 2019. Thanks for watching, everybody! What do you think? If you appreciate it, please be sure to super smash that like button, and also be sure to follow my social media platforms in the description below, and Team Lifelight's fan-up channels. And be sure to follow my Instagram at Pikachu and Sonic 222 and my DeviantArt. Please be sure to leave a comment below and give us your open-minded thoughts, and we here at Team Lifelight's fan-ups do not condone harassment or trolls aloud, or otherwise, 
Red Pollock from Comedy Central's The Red and Cindy Show will hunt you down to the ends of the Shadow Realm. Please be sure to subscribe to our channels and click the notification bell. You'll never miss a video the second it goes live on YouTube and Google. Smartphone users, please be sure to press the button down there. And PC and laptop users, please be sure to click the subscribe button. Keep that in mind and we'll see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye! <laughs>